All right, so before we start this rental income and expense section here, there are a few documents that you want to make sure you have on hand, okay? Uh, let's see here. All right, so we want the closing statement, the HUD um, statement there. That's for the purchase of the property. It shows, like, you know, how much you paid for the property when you bought it, and it has some of those closing costs that we can deduct too. If you have a property manager, you should reach out to them, ask for that cash flow statement for the year that... You know, this would be for 2021, but for the year that you're doing the tax return for, if you have a property manager, most likely they're going to issue this 1099. So make sure you have this 1099 because that needs to get reported on the tax return. Those go to the IRS. We want to make sure that reconciles with our tax return. If you have a mortgage, you'll need to reach out to the mortgage broker to get that 1098 has the amount of interest, mortgage interest that you've paid. We can deduct that on uh, against the rental income. Property tax bills, any property taxes that you've paid with the assessment values. So we'll need this for sure year one because in order to depreciate the property, we got to know how much the value of the land is. And these property tax bills do have those assessments on there. You know, how much is the building worth and how much is the land worth essentially because we cannot depreciate the land. Um, and then any additional expenses that you paid outside of the property management, like if you independently hired your own, you know, guy to come to prepare the roof, prepare to repair the roof or, um, you know, do some plumbing work or if you pay like any HOA dues. All right. All right. On to the next section here. We're going to do some rental income. So let's do that. We're going to start from the beginning here. Did you have any income from rentals? Yes, we did. All right, here, we're gonna do a rental property, not royalties, okay. We'll start with some basic info. Example, property nickname, rental property, say, Main Street, I don't know, Main ST, there we go. All right, yep, it's one, two, three, Main. Uh, we'll say Newport Beach, CA, 9262. Zero. There we go. Continue. This is a single family. I'd say that's the most uh, common. Okay. Look at you. Can even get more though. All right. Tell us about your situation. Uh, this is the first time we've rented it. Okay. Obviously, other situations there, but that's not what we're doing here. It's going to do the rental property. Was the rental property every rented every single day of the year? We're going to say yes. Was it always rented at fair price, similar to other properties in your area? Yes, it was. It wasn't at a discounted price to like my uncle. Okay, no, this was a tenant here. Are you an active participant? You own, so you can be an active participant if you own at least 10% and you made the major management decisions of the property, such as approving tenants and authorizing repairs. So active participant, the reason we are checking yes or no here, um, this is going to allow a loss on the return. If there's a loss on the rental, uh, there are special rules for what we call passive activities on the tax return. And uh, if we click no, if we're not an active participant and we're a passive, um, then you wouldn't be able to claim a loss against like your other income. Now, you're not able to claim a loss regardless if your income's over 150. So there is caveats, obviously. But if your income's under 150 and you have a loss on your rental, then you're able to claim the loss in that year against your other income, which can be very beneficial. Now, if you have a loss and you have income over 150, it's not that you lose it. It just gets carried forward, like passive activity loss carry forward is essentially what it is until a year that you either have income with your rental or the year that you sell it, you get to utilize it, okay? Nine times out of 10, you are active is what I see, okay? Did you make any of these payments with the rental? Paid a contractor over 600 bucks, made any payments? That, so this is all um, to file a 1099 is what this question is, okay? So I'm gonna click no, we don't need to file a 1099. Did any of these uncommon situations apply? I was the only owner, I was not the only owner. Okay, there was several owners. Okay, no, my property is on the Indian reservations. No, none of these apply. Okay, let's see here. All right, this is it. This is my property. Looks good to me. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes of a rental. Let's enter the income from the rental property. 
What type of income did you receive from this rental? If you received more than one, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I would say, you know, most of the times it's this 1099 that you're getting because people are hiring uh, property managers and then the property management is collecting this income and then giving it, then distributing it to the owner, you. So, and then the property management then has to send out a 1099 for the amount of rents collected is what they have to do. So that's usually what happens here. So I'm going to click this here. All right. And then we take a look at the 1099. All right. So the 1099 is going to look a little something like this. All right. And it's going to have, you know, the payer, generally speaking, this would be the rental property, you know, and the recipient, that's you. And then, you know, the IDs here, that would be like your social and that would be their EIN usually. Um, and then the amounts of rents collected. So that box one here is going to go right here. Let's say we collected um, 2,000 a month, 24,000 for the year. Federal income tax withheld, generally speaking, this is going to be a zero. Usually, I don't think it's very rare that that ever gets filled out. Um, how is your parents? We'll say this is an EIN. Who paid you? Um, property manager. And we'll say this is their made up one, two, three, EIN. Okay. All right. And obviously you're going to check those, but those are rare that we check those. Okay. There's that. So that's the income section. Easy. Did you have any more income? Nope. That's it. That's all we had. Um, now the expense stuff. This is the fun part here. Okay. Expenses and assets. You know, I kind of went quick there. Let me go back. Can we go back? Yes. What does this say here? Before we start, take a moment and understand the expenses versus assets. Expenses, essentially, you can take in the current year. Assets, we have to depreciate over the life of the asset. Okay, whatever the IRS kind of determines on that thing. Okay, so that's that's generally what this is saying. Okay, cost to buy, improve rental, like the property itself, or additions and furnishing. That's what assets would be. Okay, what expenses, assets did we have? Deal, we'll say, you know, we bought the property, of course, that's an asset. Um, let's say we did like a roof too. We'll do one of these improvements. Um, we paid property taxes. Social Security, we didn't have any of these taxes, no. Uh, insurance, had to pay a, like a homeowner's insurance on this thing. Repairs, maybe we did some plumbing, uh, cleaning. Yeah, I had to clean the place. We hired a... Uh, a cleaner, okay, mortgage interest. Yeah, okay, we got a mortgage on the property. Gonna wanna expense the interest on that. Utilities, maybe the tenant is um, liable for supplies. Maybe we didn't have any supplies. Vehicle, see, you can even write off your an auto expense against your rental. Um, if you're driving, right, to do business for your rental property, those miles would be deductible. Okay, we'll click that here. Management fees, definitely paying a manager. Okay, professional legal fees. We had to do some tax prep. All right, we'll do that. Advertising, we're going to pass. Commissions, travel, not auto. Maybe this is like an out-of-state rental. You had to fly to get there. Uh, miscellaneous, learn more. What else do they have here? Okay, well, it doesn't give them too many examples. Anyways, all right, we'll say that's that. All right, um, which of the following best describes the work done? This would be about the repairs. Okay, well, I would say the repairs were um, plumbing. It doesn't give me an example here, but that's okay. Routine maintenance is what we would say that is. Okay, this is not replacement of the roof, which we will do. Okay, it's a repair, we'll say. Okay, continue. All right, here we go. Now let's enter in the expenses. All right, let's say our, I'm just gonna make these up here. We have 2,500 is our property tax, okay. Insurance premiums, let's say I pay like 950 for insurance premiums, sounds about right. Repairs, this would be plumbing. I'll say I paid, you know, 315 bucks for plumbing. Cleaning and maintenance, okay. We'll say we pay like $1,200, 100 bucks a month is what we're doing for that. All right, mortgage interest. That's when we'd have to take a look at the 1098. Um, yep, there it is, a 1098. Okay, so we'd have to take a look at one of these forms here, 1098, 
MORT, let's take a look at this thing here. <clears throat> Okay, and this is what this generally is looking like. You're gonna put this box one right here into this right here, interest paid. Let's say we paid $5,000 um, and the lender is a mortgage bank. All right, if you paid more, right? They have some more additionals here. I paid more than what was shown in the 1098. Maybe you had a private lender, okay, that doesn't issue the 1098s. Did you refine, refinance? I'm gonna say no, we didn't refinance. If you refinance, that means you're gonna have an additional 1098, right? Um, because there would be two separate loans there. Vehicle, look at this, rental. Did you use your car or truck for the rental property? Yes, I'm gonna say we did. Okay, we'll say car. Um, what type of vehicle? This is an auto under 6,000, most common that I see. Um, we'll say at the beginning of the years when we first started using it, all right, uh, this is my car. Uh, was car veil for personal use? Yeah, it was my car, not just a rental property car. <laughs> Did you have another vehicle available for personal use? We'll say no, this is my only car. Okay, did you keep track of the miles? We'll say no, I didn't keep track as most people don't. Enter the total miles I drove. Okay, total miles you drove for any reason in 2021. So the total amount that you put on the car, right? Insurance, I think average is 12,000. I mean, generally you're not putting 12,000 exact. So let's say we did, well, 158. And how many did we put? Um, now enter the miles you drove just for your undefined work. This would be for rental, right? Um, I'm gonna say I drove, let's say, you know, 1549, not that many, but enough, okay? Continue. Were there four? No, that's I've already said before. I only have one car. Based on the miles you drove, your standard miles, nice, I'll take it, I'll take it. You can do the actual, uh, but generally speaking, the standard is better than the actual, and the actual is a little tougher because you actually have to go through all your receipts, and that would be like all your gas, all your maintenance, all insurance, um, right? Not just the amount used for the drive for the rental property, okay? So, and what they're gonna do or what the tax return does is it takes a percentage of your total gas, insurance, maintenance, and the percentage is based on the mileage. So we have to have the mileage accurate. That's why generally speaking, a lot of people, more people use the standard miles because it's a lot easier. And generally speaking, it does give you a big deduction that is comparable to the actual and sometimes even higher. All right, so there we go. We're gonna use a standard. Did we use any of these parking fees, tolls, transportation? I'm gonna say no, we didn't do any of those. All right, ka-ching, there we go. Did you wanna claim another vehicle? Nope, that's the only car I have and I already told you that TurboTax. Continue. Management fees, right? So if we take a look at like the, um, man, do I have an example? Oh, look at that. I got an example for you. This is from like a generally, you know, property manager here. Look at that for this year. Um, and this is what they'll call like a cash flow statement. So you want to get a copy of this uh, from your property manager. And this will have some of the expenses that they have spent on, okay? So before they paid you, essentially. Um, and you want to account for these. So you look at that. They have a couple here. Okay, so this is obviously, you'll want that management fees. So we'll use that, 1139 deal. Continue. What else we got? Professional legal fees, let's say my tax prep fee, we charged 750 for this. All right. New rental pro. Okay, so that's probably the easier stuff. Okay, expenses against the income. Now, the tougher thing is probably here, right? We need to get some depreciation. This is an asset, right? We don't get to um, expense the whole amount or the whole cost of the rental property year one. No, the IRS does not allow that um, because it has a useful life of what the IRS says, 27 and a half years. So that's where we get. They call it depreciation expense. Tell us about your rental property. Main Street Rental. Was this property your residence? No, this is just a rental. Did you purchase this property? Yes, we purchased it. Okay, we'll get some um, details. Let's do it. 
So here we're going to need right that uh, that HUD statement here. Uh, generally speaking, that has most of the stuff that we need. Receipts for any home improvements. Okay, like a property tax bill, um, land and improvement value. This is this is really important here um, because we cannot depreciate the value of the land on the rental property because land is here for infinity. I don't know. That's, <laughs> I guess the, uh, the reasoning behind why we can't do that. So like, you know, again, this is generally how it works. Let's say we bought the property for 500,000. Um, we can't depreciate the 500,000. We have to allocate a portion of that 500,000 towards land. Let's say it's like, you know, 200,000. So we only get to depreciate the 300,000 is how this works. All right, here we go. Tell us more. Okay, we bought it at the beginning of the year, right? You know what? Actually, I have an example, I believe, here. Let's see. Ah, look at that. Blinked it all out. There's that HUD statement. And, of course, this has no values on when we bought it. Okay, available. We'll say it was available at the beginning of the year. What was the purchase price? So we look at this here. What was the purchase price? This was a cheaper property, $35,000. Okay. Five zero zero. Okay. We'll say continue, and then we can kind of go through this here, right? Um, twenty seven sixty five. But we need to know the details on that twenty seven sixty five. And let's see here. Abstract recording fees, legal fees. Okay, let's take a look. This actually gives us an idea. Eleven oh nine. Eleven. Let's see how close that is. Where's the eleven oh nine? Of course, this one doesn't have the eleven oh nine. Haha, <laughs> fun stuff. Uh, 1111 is the other one it said. Well, it doesn't got that either. All right, what kind of closing statements or closing costs do we have on this here? Okay, paid from borrowers. This is us, so we paid. Okay, title charges. Okay, so there's our title charges. Do we have title charges on here? Title, there it is, boom. Okay, so we'll add those up. So we'll just get our handy dandy calculator here. 575 plus 429. There you go. 1004. We'll put that right there. 104. What else we got? We have $91 government recording charges. Okay. Then we have all these fun things down here. Government recording. Do we have that on here? Okay. Well, of course, same thing is what it says. Okay. Recording. There it is. 91 bucks. That's what we paid there. Okay. What else did we pay for? Home warranty, HOA, 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 transaction, okay, escrow paid, escrow pad, whatever that is. Okay, so let's see here. The home warranty, this should be like a direct expense on the one of those expenses. This should not be on the asset. So I would go back and put that in there. Okay. Um, let's see here. Paid for the seller. Okay. So, and then like all these HOAs would also be an expense on the expense. So this would not be as an asset here. Transaction fee. We can do that. Escrow pad. Okay. We'll say these are transaction title. Hmm, exactly are these ending up transaction fee, escrow pad. Well, it's none of these. We're just going to hit continue because these we should get though. Okay, well, maybe not. Man, I'm not exactly sure where in TurboTax these are supposed to go here. Transactions, fees, we should definitely get these both in there. 295 plus 200, 495. You paid for the seller. Definitely didn't pay those for the seller. Transactions, stamps, title insurance, land insurance, no. We're going to add that into these abstract and recording fees. So 495 plus the 91. There we go. 586 is what we're going to do. Okay. Continue. What improvements did you make before renting out the property? I'm going to say we replaced the roof and we paid, I don't know what the cost, 3,000 bucks, probably more, but I don't know. Continue. 
These are uncommon, okay? Energy credits. This is pretty cool. So you can do like energy credits. This would be for, oops, for um, like energy efficient doors, windows, insulation, uh, HVAC systems, water heating, okay? Um, there are certain products that qualify for those credits, which would be cool. Um, but then any of these others, you would probably know if you got those. Okay. All right. On to the next. We don't, let's say we don't have any of these. These are actually kind of rare that, um, people have any of these though. So far rental property cost basis. There it is. 35 plus all that other stuff that we spent, right? The 3000 plus the closing cost. there. We'll use the land and improvements. So now we have to take a look at a property tax bill, okay? Uh, the property tax bill will have the, the land and the improvements. The improvements is essentially the building itself um, separated out and then, you know, to get their assessment on the cost um, or like the value of your house, sorry. So let's say the 35000 if we looked at this thing, what was it, 35? Sorry, this one was 35,500. 35, I don't have the property tax bill in front of me here, but let's say it's point, let's say 60% is the land. We'll say that, 21300 minus 35500, 14, two. There we go. All right, so that's our, what we call cost basis depreciable, right? We cannot depreciate land. So there it is, continue. Rental expense deduction. This is <laughs> rental expense. This is be, I would, if you look at the tax return, this says depreciation, not rental expense deduction. Okay, there we go. Let's continue. Okay, so what I would do, right, after I looked at this particular one um, and I saw all these expenses here, I'd write all these off as like a direct expense, okay? Um, already put the improvements on there. I'm going to delete that one because that's already on there. Um, how do we add another expense that maybe we missed? Another rental, add expense or asset. There we go. Okay, let's do this. Um, HOA, let's do an HOA expense. Miscellaneous, there we go, continue. There it is. Let's put that HOA in there. HOA, whoops, HOA. All right, this one has, let's open that guy up. Handy dandy calculator, where's our HOA? We'll go 275, 405 plus 135, boom, 118 or 8, 815, 815. There we go. Add another row. We'll do also that home warranty, right? Home warranty. Did I spell that right? A N T Y. Okay, 360. 360. Oh, there we go. Okay, continue. What else? Okay, we're going to say that's it. Carryover, uh, carryovers, limitations, at risk. So if you have done your tax return previously outside of TurboTax with this rental, this would be really, really, really important to do properly because there's probably carryovers. Um, generally speaking, a lot of these carryovers for rentals is entering in the accurate, you know, uh, prior depreciation so we're not like double dipping on depreciation getting too much of that expense and the passive activity loss carryovers that happen here okay um so those are a little tricky believe it or not but nonetheless they would be really important to make sure that we carry over properly so when we go to dispose of the property we have the correct basis and we do utilize any of the passive activity loss that has not been realized previously okay well there we go that's what we got for our rental oh look at that qbi safe harbor Qualified business income is what this stands for. Oh, of course, there it is. And they got a nice little link on what is that stuff, okay? Um, but essentially, does this qualify? You know, nine times out of 10, people do qualify um, their rental as a QBI. Okay, that's the short and skinny on it. What is this? So they're gonna have 
like all these rules here to do the safe harbor. What's going on? Okay. No, yes. Okay. Um, so perform 250 hours or more in rental services across all properties. So part of that 250 hours for the year is kind of like checking in on property management, um, you know, fixing anything or, you know, the, the drive time, anything related toward that rental. Okay. 250 hours is that requirement. And what is 250 hours? If you do 250 divided by 365 days, that's less than a half hour a day. Let's say 52 weeks, 250 divided by 52 weeks. That's less than five hours a week. Okay. Um, and that also would be like, you know, admin work too, like, you know, keeping track of your income and expenses on your end too, not just the property manager because, you know, they're going to have their own cash flow, but then you also have expenses outside of property management, like maybe HOA, property taxes, mortgage interest, those types of things, making those payments, right? That would be counted towards hours of the rental services, okay? Uh Kept separate, uh, separate records showing income and expenses, right? So we do, we, most people have that. Didn't use it as your residence. Didn't use triple net lease. You'll know what that is if you did that. Uh, didn't rent to commonly controlled business. So again, nine times out of 10, we're going to check the yes bo uh, box there. Okay. Um, con uh, confirming property type and description. There it is. Okay. It's a residential single family home. Boom. Let's cover some uncommon issues. Business income needs to be adjusted okay deductions from other topics are related to this business i need to adjust gain loss uh oh the geez what is this this is the assets for the qbi um i'm gonna say no the business has wages very uncommon i do not see these at all very commonly okay i'm gonna continue ein there's no ein on this thing it's just my social uh, very rare that people have an EIN for their rental activities. Okay. Um, do you want to provide more info about this business in case it is needed later? Might exceed, uh, 164. So let's take care of it now. So th this has to do with that loss is what this looks like we're doing. 150. Um, okay. Got it. No. Great news. You get a tax break. Okay, that's the QBI. Okay, deal. Oh, so that's what this was in relation to. That 164 is for the qualified business income deduction and how to get that um, based on this rental income. And there are limits to your income in order to get that qualified business income deduction, QBI. All right, here we go. Continue. And there we go. There's the QBI. Got it. Okay, continue. Are we at the end of it? Voila. Wow. There it is. So out of our income, minus all the expenses, that's what we got left over. Rental properties. We're done. 